Hi, I'm Chris with Launch Code, and in this video, we're going to explore static views with the Timeleaf template engine and show you how to just set up the basics of using Timeleaf within your Spring Boot application. Uh, and since static views aren't that much fun, the next video will show you how to use dynamic views. So to uh, get started with Timeleaf, there are a couple things we need to do. Before we even starting start trying to make a template, we first need to make sure that we have the Timeleaf library included in our project. So let's go to our build.gradle file. And down at the bottom, you see the dependencies section. We talked about this earlier as being the place where we specify all the external packages that our project needs. Timeleaf is one of those external packages. So we need to add a new dependency. And that dependency ends up being uh, named very, very similarly to the Spring Boot starter web dependency. So I'm just gonna copy that line and make a new line, paste it below. And instead of web, at the end of that line, time leaf. So the full dependency is implementation, and then the package name is org spring framework dot boot colon spring dash boot dash starter dash time leaf. Okay, so this will, as we just saw Gradle down at the bottom, uh, furrowing its brow and, and spinning around, uh, Gradle went out and fetched that package for us just now, and so it is indeed in our project. So now we can go ahead and use time leaf. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a static time leaf template. And this is by static, we just mean something that doesn't change. It's just going to be static HTML. And uh, we're looking at the Hello Spring controller from our Hello Spring application. Um, and this is sort of uh, refactored and cleaned up a little bit from what you last saw there, but it's essentially the same code. It's essentially the same code we wrote during that Hello Spring lesson. And the form method here, the method that generates a uh, form is a prime candidate for a static template because it contains just HTML. There's no data being dynamically inserted. And uh, so therefore it's just a static view. So let's go ahead and make a template that can include this HTML for our form and uh, alleviate us from the need of, of creating these ugly strings within our Java code. Over on left uh, in the project pane, our templates will live below the resources folder. So um, we've got source main resources is the folder we're in. And this is where templates need to go. There needs to actually be a subdirectory here. So if you don't see one in your project, go ahead and make it. The subdirectory below resources should be called templates. There we go. So uh, I'm going to create right click on resources, go to the top of the context dialog and um, go to new directory and give the directory the name templates. This is the place that Spring Boot will look for our templates. If we put our templates somewhere else, it won't know where to find them. Okay. And now within my templates folder, I'm going to create my first template. So I'll right click on the templates folder, go up to new, and I'm going to say file. And I'm going to call this form.html. Our Timeleaf templates will have the extension .html. They're gonna look a lot like HTML, but they're gonna have some additional syntax in them as well. But they'll still have the HTML file extension. Okay? And when you add new files in IntelliJ, it'll, it'll prompt you with this message asking if you wanna add it to version control, and you usually do. So I'm gonna say add. So now I have an empty file, and most of our Timeleaf templates will look um, the similar, will look the same or very similar to start with. So I actually have prepared uh, a little template here, a little template template, if you will, uh, that contains the bare bones code that I need to start with Timeleaf. So I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this, and then explain it. Okay, so. This looks a lot like HTML, but it actually is, is a, a language called XML, which is an extension of HTML and allows for syntactic extensions of HTML or syntactic variations. So XML still has this tag-based syntax. Um, however, it allows you to add different types of tags or create new tags of your own or new attributes of your own. So this is how Timeleaf is built. It's built on top of HTML. And in particular, the Timeleaf tags that we'll be learning about are going to allow us to dynamically insert and manipulate data within our views or within our HTML pages, if you wish to think about it this way. The most important thing in this template is in the second line here. Within the HTML tag, there's an attribute xmlns colon th equals, and then it has the URL uh, to the Timeleaf website, http colon slash slash www.timeleaf.org. What this does is this is signifying to our um, IDE, to IntelliJ, that this file is a Timeleaf template. This uh, XMLNS 
is essentially saying this is uh, the definition of um, the time leaf syntax. And so XML, in the top of an XML file, you include an XMLNS, which just stands for XML namespace. Uh, and that's basically an identifier that allows um, other programs, IDEs, uh, you know, web services, et cetera, to understand what the syntax of the, of the given file is. So if we don't have this, then IntelliJ will view our Timeleaf template as just being a plain HTML file. And when we start going to use Timeleaf specific syntax, it'll yell at us, okay? So this is important to include. So um, this is the minimum code you need to make a time leaf template, and it's kind of annoying to kind of have to copy and paste this time after time. So let me show you a little trick here to keep this starter code in a convenient place where you can find it. Um, let's go to back to our project pane. I'm going to right click on templates again, or you can actually right click anywhere. It doesn't matter now. Uh, and I'm going to go up to the top to new. And down below, towards the bottom of the new menu, I'm going to go to the item that says edit file templates. So this new menu gives you different templates for creating different files. And so each of these uh, listed above uh, will generally create some minimal starter code for you based on that given file format. So for example, we see that there's an HTML file template, a Kotlin script template, uh, a JavaFX application template. These are all different types of uh, starter code templates for the given languages. We want to create one of these um, that will be starter code for a generic time leaf template. So we do that by going to edit file templates and it opens up this new dialog. In the left-hand pane, we can click on plus to create a new template. Uh, let me call it time leaf. And the next box, we're asked to give the extension, the file extension of that. We said that time leaf templates have the HTML extension. And then in the main box below, we can just paste the HTML or the time leaf code that we had uh, previously. Okay, if I then click apply and okay, then that has just now stored all of this code for easy reuse within IntelliJ. So let's see where we can find it. If I wanted to create a second template, I would right click on templates, go up to new, and now see that in my new menu, I have a file template called Timeleaf. So anytime I wanna create a Timeleaf template, I just click on that one, give it a name, and it gives me that template with the same starter code so I don't have to keep it around and copy paste it. Okay, so I just created a test.html template just to show you how that works. I'm gonna get rid of it actually. Okay, so now we have a template for our form. This is just gonna be static HTML. Let's go ahead and go back to our Hello Spring controller and I'm going to uh, cut and paste the HTML from the string. So I just took all the HTML that was in the HTML string. I'm going to come back and put it over here and I'm going to paste it and then I'm just going to clean it up. I obviously don't need the HTML and body tags anymore. Um, I don't need any double quotes anymore. I don't need any concatenation symbols. So I'm just cleaning this up. Oops. There we go. Uh, okay, so that looks good. So let me just do some quick indentation to get this all looking nice. All right, so now we have a form, a page with a single form, with a single text input, and a submit button. And um, that should be the exact same HTML we had previously in our controller code. So now notice this looks a lot nicer than having to concatenate a lot of strings within our Java code. So it's a lot easier to read, a lot easier to maintain, etc. So to get this to work, to tie this into our controller, we need to do some more work. Let's go back to our controller. And now within our hello form handler, previously this was returning a string, a plain string that contained a bunch of HTML. So I'm gonna delete the entire body of the hello form handler. And now instead of returning a string, I wanna return the name of a template. So the name of my template is form.html. And so I don't need to add the HTML because that's implied. I can just return the string form. And then since I'm no longer returning a plain string for uh, returning in a response, I actually want um, Spring Boot to go find a template named form, I can remove this response body annotation. So once we use templates, we won't use response body annotations any longer. Uh, and the reason is that by default, Spring Boot will, um, when it sees a string coming out of a response handler or being returned from a response handler, 
it generally assumes that that is the name of a template, and then it tries to find that template in order to render the view to, re to return to the user. So um, the only exception is when it sees a response body annotation. This, the response body annotation says, hey, don't go look for a template. Just give the user back this particular string that I'm returning. In our case, we actually do want them to go find a template now, and so we're going to uh, remove response body and just return the name of the template. Okay, and so this should actually work. So we've, we haven't actually uh, made any functional changes to our code. Uh, we've just refactored it now. So instead of using uh, a plain string to, to render a, uh, a form, we're going to use a time leaf template. So let's go ahead and start our application and test it out. And once it's running, we'll go to a web browser and let's see, what URL are we at? So um, I don't have any request mapping path definition on my class at the top. So that means I'm just at the URL slash form. So let's go to localhost colon 8080 slash form. Okay. And now we see the same form we saw before, but this is not, um, you know, returned directly as a string from the handler. It's now using the time leaf template to create this view. Let's go ahead and test out the form submission. So let's type in a value to the form and it submits just as before. So this is great. So this is a, a minor but important improvement. Removing and separating view code from our controller code is a way to keep our V and C uh, and MVC, to keep the V and the C separate from each other. It also makes it a lot easier to read our HTML code within our templates. So the next lesson video will show you how to create uh, a dynamic template which changes based on the data that the user submits.